six of Ready Math, we start our last unit of the year, and that's dealing with geometry, or talking mostly about shapes. So in our first lesson, lesson 26, we're starting out by recognizing and drawing shapes. And hopefully, part of this will be review for you, and you know some of your shapes from kindergarten, or maybe even before that. But we start to talk a little bit more about the attributes of shapes and what makes them specifically a square or a rectangle or whatever. So the book gives you um, four different pictures here to talk about four different types of shapes. Triangles, which is hopefully something, like I said, you may know from kindergarten or even before, where triangles have three sides and three angles. And so we start to talk about what a side is. Side is those big long lines that make up the shape. And the angles are the places where the lines kind of come together. And so we see in a triangle there are three sides, but there's also three angles. So we moved on then to also the term quadrilateral. And that might be a new term for you. Even though you've done stuff with squares and rectangles before, you probably didn't know that they were part of a larger group of shapes called quadrilaterals, all right? And all quadrilaterals, just like triangles, have a certain amount of shape or sides and angles, and that would be four sides and four angles. So we know our squares have four sides. We know that rectangles have four sides. There's also two more shapes that fall into this category of four sides and four angles, and that is trapezoids and rhombuses, all right? So those might be two new shapes that you didn't know before. Sometimes you may have seen a shape similar to a rhombus, we call it a diamond, all right? So those are new shapes in our quadrilaterals because they all have four sides and four angles. Then we have a group called pentagons and they all have five sides and five angles. And so you'll see here two shapes, um, very kind of similar shapes, but the sides are a little bit longer on this one and this one, but you'll see they have five sides and again, five angles. And the last group we really focus on is hexagons and the <clears throat> one hexagon right here, which if it was red and said stop on it, you'd probably recognize it as a stop sign, but it is a hexagon, it has six sides and then six angles or six spots where those lines come together. And that one is also a hexagon, even though it has a little bit of a different shape. So part of the lesson is reviewing what you know, learning some new terminology for some of the shapes and talking about sides and angles. Then we also look about how to put shapes together to create other shapes. And this is gonna come in handy um, as you go on to second grade and third grade. And so in this example from Ready Math, it says make us these shapes. How can she put them together to make a hexagon? So they gave you two examples in the book. One way is to put two trapezoids together to make that yellow figure, which was the hexagon. Or here they used four triangles and a rhombus. And hopefully then you took some time in class or with your teacher and you looked to see how you could take this shape and fill it in with all the different ones, all right? For instance, I could take, and excuse my drawing here, I'm gonna use this one from the book. I could actually take that and I could split it apart and I could have actually used all triangles, all right? So it's a different color triangle, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six triangles could help me make that hexagon. All right, so you could have filled in six triangles here. Or what about, let me erase that, how many of these rhombuses could be put into a hexagon? So again, please pardon my drawing skills. It will not be perfect. All right, but I'll get it close. Whoops, not a very straight line, but hopefully you can see what I'm trying to do here. And that is to show you that I could actually take three rhombuses, sorry, still not very straight, but those four, or sorry, those three blue pieces could fit inside that to make that a hexagon. So there's lots of different combinations we could come up with 
we go back up here, I could use a trapezoid. I could use a rhombus right here and a triangle right there. All right, so lots of different combinations. And so they gave you a couple of other shapes to kind of fill in as well. For instance, this one, kind of a weird looking shape. We start thinking about it, it's one, two, three, four, five, six different sides and one, two, three, four, five, six different angles. So even though it does not look like a hexagon that we were looking at over here, like that yellow figure, it is still a hexagon. And so you could really take a lot of the same shapes we were using on the previous screen to make this one. So I could still use two trapezoids. I could split it right here and there's a trapezoid there and a trapezoid there. I could divide it up into six triangles, just like I did on the other side. They look a little different here. Again, my drawing's not perfect, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six triangles. And so I actually showed you that one right over here, still six triangles, just put in a different order. All right, so within these shapes, there's lots of ways to make different shapes. All right, so that's something that we've learned, and that's something you're going to continue to practice and apply as you continue to learn geometry throughout elementary school.